We call ourselves Salvos in capital letters. They reveal its existence in continuous in existence, returning beyond the demonstration, both its perfect identity and simplicity. The strongest sensation of violent attachment is saying instead of attracting us from his view, takes it more intently, and so on and so on. Right? To attempt a further purpose for this, we're to weaken its evidence, and so on. Okay, right? Now, unluckily, all these positive assertions are contrary to that very experience which pleaded from them, nor do we have any idea of self acting advantage. Um, uh, and he, he goes on to say that whenever he concentrates on what these people, I must confess, if anyone in serious and unpleasant reflection thinks he has a different notion of himself from Hume's, when Hume concentrates on what they call himself, all he sees is some particular impression. Now, if anyone else thinks he has a different notion of himself, I must confess I can reason no longer with him. Just as I feel about these uh, robot philosophers. <laughs> All I can honor is that he may be in the right mind that we are essentially different in this particular. That, of course, is a target. Okay. Now, uh, I once, I read this passage with some enthusiasm and shock, and I can talk to about other little kids. Uh, my friend did not get it. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, older, at about 25, I talked about it to a non philosopher young woman who might have knew, and uh, she said, Well, he must have ever looked in a mirror. <laughs> But at the present time, I see the justice of the remark, since the idea that I am directly going to myself as a Cartesian subject need not imply that the referent is something other than what appears in the mirror. Of course, as I remarked at the other time I talked about this, uh, uh, there may have been a problem for you looking at yourself in a mirror. I, I was warned that not too many people laughed and that not. Why would, does everyone know why there would have been a problem? Well, he was tremendously fat. <laughs>
evolving after an animal species and so on, right? So, Descartes, a priori, involves that, and I not. That is one example, right? I can be in complete connection with myself, but my body is an exercise that I can be completely self-aware, right? So, she concludes that if I were regarded as a singular term, a referring expression, it could only refer to the dubious Cartesian ego that Hume is unaware of. See, look, the problem with the Hume and uh, Hume mentioned in my book, and let's assume we're talking about Cartesian egos versus Hume's Hume, is that Hume seems to think that there could be sensations, impressions, mental qualities with no error. And it's the bearer's existence is dubious. But, uh, and I mentioned this in my paper, which I'm going to my discussion these matters. But that seems to me to be quite unintelligible. And that Hume must have gone wrong somewhere. I think Carl may have gone wrong somewhere, too. Okay, now, um, now, uh, I mean, what would a floating sensation not belonging to anyone be? Yet, according to him, the supposed self is just a construct about a sequence of sensations and so on. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, look. Her conclusion is that if I were a singular term referring to something, it would vanish as much as this Cartesian ego. Therefore, it does not refer at all. It simply has the look of an expression that refers to an object and must be given some different analysis. Mm. Now, at least that's the way I understand if I, if I was referring to the expression that Descartes was right, and now troubles persist. Now, I never got to talk to Elizabeth about that, so I had many conversations with her. And maybe we didn't talk because this was a dilemma against me, or we hadn't seen each other. I don't know which. Uh, but, um, I did hear it for a third party that he asked her, well, look, if I was not her, then, for example, um, how could you refer from I am a philosopher who became Catholic to some philosopher who became Catholic from a normal, and she 